Welcome to a day of prayer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Together, let's engage in relationship with Christ through prayer, faith, and His Word. Good morning and welcome. You're listening to Day of Prayer's Morning Bible Study. My name is Lee Charles and we're so glad you could join us. But before we begin, let us open up in prayer. Lord, we just thank you for today, Lord. We just thank you for the smiles that are on our faces, Lord, and that you have provided us with your joy, Lord, which is your Holy Spirit, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for the fruit of the Spirit as well, Lord, that is manifest inside of our lives, Lord, and that we see you working and moving through us, Lord. And Lord, furthermore, we just thank you that you have chosen to work through us, Lord, and that you've chosen us to be your vessels. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' almighty name, amen. And amen. Well, good morning and welcome, everyone. Glad to have you with us here as we, I'll say, complete our wrap-up of the study in the book of James. So it's going to be a little bit of a different episode Mm -hmm. because we want to give the opportunity to go around the room and those that are here and have participated to give them an opportunity to share what the Lord ministered and spoke to them throughout this study. Because mm-hmm. there was a lot in here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, the, we went through the book of James because the Lord directed us to, right? And literally bringing us, if you will, full circle, right? Into, and this goes all the way back to our study of the book of Acts on what it looks like to live out our faith, but also to walk by faith, right? The practical things that we can apply to our everyday life to aid in our growth and development in the Lord in relationship with him, both spiritually and naturally. Mm-hmm. So uh, that was the purpose of doing this. So we want to give each of you the opportunity to share, I'll say some of the main takeaways that you got out of doing this. So who'd like to begin? I would. All right, Layla. So one thing that I enjoyed about the book of James, you know, the whole Bible is good, but I can say looking at it and the things that we've discussed, this is the first book that's about you. It's all about me. (laughs) Not really. (laughs) It's about Jesus. But when you compare it to other books that are written, it's more focused on the believer how how are you developing your faith how are you perceiving the things of god how are you walking your everyday life in private and in public it's centered on where you stand with the father versus you know like some of the other books like um take a look at proverbs how are you dealing with other people or um hebrews looking at faith on the whole there's normally some other party that that's also the like the main the main mm-hmm. character and you're, you're kind of subbed on the side you're your character b mm-hmm. um but for james just learning or being able to see the step-by-step instruction i know some for some of us myself included certain things don't come together as well unless i have a step-by-step guide with some pictures some illustration telling me what the finished product should look like you know you, you mm-hmm. get a you get a lego set and you build and you check what you're building with the picture that's on the box to make sure you're putting all the pieces together and making sure that you have it um, done correctly. Whereas some things like math, okay, a picture is not that helpful. Show me an example of the problem and I'll compare my outcome with what you got and see if I got it right. So for the, the faith aspect, when we learned about what it was, it's like reading that math equation, seeing the different elements that go into an effective prayer. And then James is seeing the picture of you walking it out. What does the finished Lego thing look like? What is the finished object? How does it come together and what does it do? So having these different components really opens, you know, the door for the Lord to use us but use me in different ways that i you know anticipated or thought he could i mean you've always taught me to read the bible and have a relationship with the lord but understanding the different ways and the nuances how he wants to use people to um get his desired outcome is important and you having james to show the different ways we can prepare for that so that we're ready to meet the challenges when they come. We're ready to do the work when it's time and we don't grow tired and we don't grow weary like we do with so many other things. And we're actually able to have good success like what the Lord promised Joshua when he focused, when Joshua focused on the Lord, didn't sway to the left or the right, didn't go after foreign gods or any of the sort. 
but he meditated on the law day and night and then his way was secure and then he had good success so having that recipe if you will for the secret sauce to go on your barbecue is really good <laughs> amen the charles well i would say for me the greatest part that the lord pointed out to me was just understanding that as you said this is a practical guide for how we are supposed to act but the lord was emphasizing to me about how we're treating god because mm-hmm. oftentimes we forget about that we think god is just there to do what we want him to do and we don't f- think that he has feelings or that he mm-hmm. feels anything we think that god's god he can tolerate us not listening to him mm-hmm. he'll be all right mm-hmm. that's how we treat him that's how humans often think about it but just understanding that all of our actions have a direct impact on the lord not that he's going to be any less god based off what we do or don't do but just considering the lord as um not as a person but as another person in a relationship in the regard of if between me and my siblings there's two people it's Mm -hmm. not just me and i have my sibling myself Mm is that's not how it works it is somebody totally different who feels things and can act such has a mm, understanding and has a reaction to what I do and what I say towards them. So James is also saying that everything that you're doing to humans, you're ultimately doing towards God. That's what we see in the gospels. When they said, Lord, when do we see you naked in prison, poor, wounded? When do we see you in any of these regards? Mm-hmm. And he said, when you saw these people like this, you saw me, but you did nothing about it. Mm-hmm. And that's what we have to um, understand is that the Lord is talking throughout his Bible about how we, how throughout the Bible, how we treat him. Because mm-hmm. if we're treating God right, then we're automatically going to treat his creations right. right. Mm-hmm. Meaning that if we are loving God with the love of God, mm-hmm. then we're going to love his creations with the love of God. I There's not going to be two standards. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be us trying to love people from our flesh and then try to love God in a different way. Mm-hmm. That's where the dichotomy exists. And, that's where people often become confused is understanding that the Lord has feelings as well and likes to be well treated mm-hmm. by his creations. And make that personal, son. It doesn't matter what anybody else mm-hmm. thinks about the Lord in, in regard to you. It only matters how you treat the Lord. Because yes, when mommy. you stand before him, that's what he's going to speak with you about. Not how did Susie or Bobby or your mom or your dad, how did anybody else treat him? But Charles, how did they treat me? Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, he's going to say, how did you treat me? Yes, mommy. So this is, as Layla said, very personal and personally centered in the book of James. Yes. Um, Any other thoughts? Oh, yes, mommy. I have a few more. Um, Okay. And understanding that throughout this whole time that James is referring to people who know better, as you were saying, that this is a book for the people who are inside the quote unquote faith, as people describe it, and are walking Mm -hmm. it out. And just understanding that there is a process that we have to go through. Um, I would say for me, at times I felt that if I was doing the Lord's why and expected everything to suddenly fix itself. I expected no promise to exist, nothing that I had to deal with or work on. I expected all to be good in the neighborhood. But that's not <laughs> what happened, and that's not um, the case was. And as such, from for me my um, personally, it left me open to the adversary because I felt like, I I said, yes, Lord, so, of course, no temptation is going to come towards me. Mm-hmm. And I that's how or I thought it was. Or co- difficulties or mm-hmm. Yes, Mommy. And just understand that there's stuff to work on throughout um, our walk with the Lord. It's not just a one time and it's done. And as such, you can go on and you never have to worry about anything. Not that you should worry, period. But there's not, nothing you have to deal with with the Lord. Face or overcome or conquer. Yes, Mm -hmm. but just understand that the Lord has a process and he wants us to go through it and it's to build us up, not to tear us down. Amen. Amen. Promise? Well, I appreciate what you and Lachalus were saying. Wait, what? Layla and Lachalus were saying and what the Lord was showing me throughout the book was we had seen James more so a cause and effect kind of situation. Throughout the book, we see this happens, that's going to happen as well. And so it becomes more real and more, I'd say, mathematical, as in you're instantly going to get a formula, not formula, an answer, no matter what you do. We often, we see that throughout the book of James and how it's good for us to understand that in 
not to sound insulting or saying that the rest of the Bible is not good, but it's less mi- mystical, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. For Proverbs, it's and when you think about when you think about it, you would say it says wise sayings. That's what you would say when you want someone to go ah or go man, that's good. You mm-hmm. would say rather go to there to see mystical rather than James. You would mm-hmm. go to James to be concrete. Okay, and it's, it's very practical, is what you're saying. Yes, and direct. Okay. Mm-hmm. And how uh, it links what the other books are saying and showing their connection with the natural life with our natural life and shows us how when we treat other people we're also it also conditions us to treat God and how we also treat God is also towards other people Mm -hmm. and also formulating our mindsets to revolve around God rather than these are the actions we must do in order to get this outcome it Mm. shows the um, actions and direct Correlation with how God views and what we're doing to Him. Okay. Amen. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed what what all of you said. Um, that is, it is correct. This is a very practical book, not to sound redundant, um, but you know, when you read Proverbs, we've talked about that, and it talks about the immoral woman. And the harlot, and then you might look around and go, well, who is that? You know, we don't call anybody harlots anymore. And who's the immoral woman? How would I know? And, you know, being a female, how, you know, looking in the mirror, is that me? Am I her? Depending on how your lifestyle is. But there's a lot to try to, um, I'll say, absorb when you read different books of the Bible. And uh, there's an, an element that seems like these are other people and you're reading about other people and it makes it seem distant. Mm. as though it doesn't apply to you and you kind of develop a habit of well they did this while you're sitting nice and reserved or over on the picnic bench and you're just kind of watching a movie or reading stories about other people i mean even when you read like first corinthians and things like that it's like oh that was them this is what they were doing back then but the book of james is to you it's to me and um you know it's very which I, I love about it, his finger is in my face. Mm-hmm. Because at the, at the end of the day, I appreciate the brothers and sisters in Christ who have gone on before me, who have won victories, and I can learn from observing their life. But it doesn't always translate into me thinking I'm doing these actions or I'm not doing something I'm supposed to do or um, how do I live my everyday life? Because The carnal mind wants to put up the shield of, well, this is 2,000 years later or more. Uh, um, I'm not a Jew or, um, you know, we don't talk like that anymore. Immoral woman or the harlot or, you know, we don't use those terms anymore. So all of those things, the mind can be tempted to be moved to a distance away from the scriptures being applicable for today. But we know the Holy Spirit is always looking to convict us right not condemn us but guide us and direct us and correct us but this is like you can't escape it this is pointing right at your little nose my little nose and i try to dodge and like oh it's still there okay but it also lets me know when i'm going in the right direction not that we use it as a quote-unquote formula a sterile formula but the lord always left markers and indicators right he said put up these stones so you know right and yes, look for these things as you go and follow me, right? He put the cloud out there and the pillar of fire out there so that they could follow him. And really this takes the, what we see like when we examine the children of Israel, how they walk through things and how God responded to them. And this expounds and gives clarity as to the why. Mm-hmm. It's not just you sin, do 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 you know, and then God's upset. It seems like that just happened so fast especially when you're looking from an immature perspective, but that's not who God is at all. And it it takes those things that seemed mysterious. They seemed hard to understand about God's character and his nature and goes, Nope, snatch that blanket off. Here's the truth. You fell into sin. That's because you wanted it cut and dry. You're like, Ooh, that kind of punched my gut, but tell me the truth so I can fix it. I don't want to wait for a surprise on judgment day. 
and my chance to fix it is gone. I don't want any surprises. I don't want to know for certain. Hey, and please excuse me for just being real blunt about that. I don't want a surprise. Tell me now, Jesus, so I can get it right with you. And no sense going through life pretending like I got it right. And you're going to say something different at the end. Depart from me, I never knew you. I don't want to hear that. I want to hear well done. Amen. So I enjoy the directness and the application of faith. What does it look like when you're walking your faith out day by day? How does this look? And uh, one more thing, I was dreaming about this the other day when it talks about Elijah and um, back to chapter five and uh, verse 17, he has a nature like ours. Most of the time we think Elijah's special. So if you're saying that, that means I'm special too. And you are special. God loves you. Mm -hmm. But what he was saying is Elijah was using his faith. When he entered into this situation, in contrast to when he was hiding from the Lord and running away from him, in this situation that's referenced here, he used his faith and he refused to give up. So use your faith. Keep pressing forward with God. Don't turn. Don't drop it. Don't quit. Persevere and endure. Even if you have to go back seven times or 14 times or however many times you think about Abraham, how many times did he keep believing for Isaac and he did not give up. So not looking for us to be special. God loves us all, but looking for our faith to endure and to use it repeatedly. Um, honey, you had something you wanted to say? Yeah. Um, and you were alluding to it with, you said, well, no, right? So the Lord in the book of James gives us these signs, exactly what every mm -hmm. generation seems to ask for, especially in scripture, right? What's the sign of dot, 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 fill in the blank, mm -hmm. right? Uh, of, of your coming, of, right? Or that Who's I'm, the Antichrist? Right, no. or, or, but even for the, the rich young ruler, right? What's uh -huh. the sign that I'm fulfilling that all I'm of these things? That I'm approved. Exactly, that uh -huh. I'm approved. Well, that's what the book of James goes into and leaves these these signs or these these waypoints these markers mm -hmm. telling us hey this is if you're seeing these things then it's it's giving you a sign of either yep you're on the right path confirmation and continue to exactly mm -hmm. thank you confirmation that you're moving forward in the Lord and in the things of the mm -hmm. Lord and if you're experiencing these things over here mm -hmm. then you are out of alignment mm -hmm. you you have disaligned yourself from the Lord you've separated yourself in some way Right, seek the Lord first and foremost, mm -hmm. and then let the brothers that are or sisters in the Lord that are more mature, if you have if you have refused to listen to the Lord that He sends, help you. All right, mm -hmm. walk with you, being patient, being. Uh, and I'll say it in this way: demonstrating the love of God, mm -hmm. in order and a fullness of the love of God, that you are restored or reconciled back to Him. Mm -hmm. So in this, you really see and hear the heart of the Lord, right? I mean, throughout mm -hmm. all of scripture, but I would say in the book of James, and, and if you can boil it down to one single word, it's love, right? Mm -hmm. We know love never fails, right? Mm -hmm. But it's also what he, what Jesus talked about in, in the book of John, right? <clears throat> uh, chapter 13, verse 35, where he says, by this, all men will know that you are my disciples. If you have love for one another, Right, mm -hmm. which is the second part of what Jesus said the two greatest commandments were. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, so which means denotes that they were already fulfilling the first part. Right, so are we doing that? And is that evident not just to the Lord, but to the Lord through how we're ministering Holy Spirit to our neighbor as ourself? Mm -hmm. Right, doing good to all especially those that are of the household of faith. Amen. Right? Or And in that, we must watch ourselves, right? We must be careful how we do things. But we that's what the core of it comes down to, is the love of God. And, and we've talked about that, I'll say, even recently. All right, you see it throughout this entire book. But it's something that James experienced himself. The Lord was patient, right? He was long-suffering. He, he was. As it says in others, uh, I'll say in, in the book of... Um, Isaiah, right? How he would not be disheartened or crushed until he established justice on the earth, right? The coastlands will wait expectantly for his law. Well, his law is the law of love. Amen. Right? Amen. And, and Charles, you brought this up in a recent episode, right? 
uh, I believe maybe the last episode, right? You were talking about fulfilling the law of God. Well, it's the love. It's mm-hmm. the love commandment that he gave us in, in John 13, all right? But then he also, if you will, doubles down on it in his high priestly prayer, Jesus' high priestly prayer in John 17, right? Saying that that they would all be one, I and you and you and me and me and, and us and them, right? Again, co- confirming this is demonstrating the love of God and even the unity. And the unity is absolutely required for the body of Christ. And I mean that to say the church, ultimately the bride of Christ. Where is the unity demonstrated by love? Mm -hmm. So because if that happens, then these other, well, I'll say the episodes that we've gone into that we've talked about the heart of the Lord, right? Towards especially the oppressed, right? And in any and every capacity, right? Whether it's hatred or anger, or even I'll say usury and withholding, right? None of those things would be an issue amongst believers. Those that claim they are the Lord's that are followers of Christ. It wouldn't be experienced throughout the body of Christ, right? And, or we would also see it in the, the awesome thing or what, what man perceives as being awesome, right? Mm -hmm. Talking about the healing, the restoration or reconciliation of, well, our brother and sister in Christ, but also our neighbors, mm-hmm. right? Being restored or reconciled back to the Father. We would see this throughout. It would permeate and bring about the glory of the Lord throughout the entire earth. Mm-hmm. So, you know, as I, as I look at this, we see the practical side of things. Step by step. Step by step. And it mm-hmm. all comes in, if you will, the hinge point being um, Jesus but it's really the love, right? Because what does it say? God is love. So Amen. are we willing to truly submit to God the way he has, I'll say encouraged, but really commanded us, admonished us, and commanded us to walk in his way? Mm-hmm. And if I could just say this to close us out today, it's easy to look at the global perspective. If the whole world did this, it would be so awesome. Mm. But really, you can't control what the whole world does. But if I do what I'm supposed to do, I'll bring the glory of God on the scene in Amen. my zone, my place that God has put me. And it'll be heaven on earth right here. And then I can be in position to let God bring all the rest of his body into that position. But I can do what I can do for me and my household and bring the glory of God right there. And God will be equally pleased if I'm the only one, right? We, we know he doesn't mind a Noah, right? <laughs> or yes, a mommy. Daniel. He doesn't mind that. Or an Abraham. He doesn't mind that. If that's what, that's all he is. I mean, not all he is, but that, that's all he has. I'm going to be that one and focus on do what I'm supposed to do. And that will encourage or allow my brothers and sisters to get into alignment because I'm not fishing in their business I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, right? And the Lord has a chance to manifest himself and then spread wherever he wants to from there. That's how the garden started, the Garden of Eden, right? He put it in one place and he said, spread out. Rather than, well, let me try to get everybody else to do this. And then I neglect myself Or to come here to this spot. No, the Lord met people where they were at. That's right. But our job is to make sure that we are the place where the glory of God can reside independently and uniquely. Amen. And he'll take care of our brothers and sisters to make sure that they manifest the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Well, I say we're going to pause there for today as we wrap up this study. I want to encourage you to join us on the, on the next episode as we begin our study in the book of Zechariah. So we look forward to having you join us Mm -hmm. and us growing in the Lord and our relationship with him, fulfilling our role as we are learning how to fulfill our role as we begin that study. So we're going to pause there for today. With that, can I get a volunteer to close us out in prayer, please? I will. All right, LaCharles. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that you've taken time, Lord, and that you have met with us, Lord, and that you have revealed what you want us to know from this book, Lord, that you have given us your Holy Spirit, Lord, who leads us and guides us as we read your scripture, Lord. 
Lord, furthermore, we just thank you, Lord, that you have thought of us, Lord, and that you have understood what we needed, Lord, before we knew we had need of it, Lord. And that you saw us, Lord, where mm-hmm. we were, and you said that you delighted in us, Lord, and that you wanted us as your children, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' amen. almighty amen. name, amen. And amen. Well, we love you. God bless you. And have a wonderful day. Want to know more about a day of prayer? Sign up for our newsletter where you'll get the latest updates on the ministry, inspiring messages, and coupon codes for the merch shop. Visit our website, adayofprayer.org. Click on Connect in the menu bar and complete the form. Be sure to check the box that says Subscribe. Thank you for listening to A Day of Prayer. We trust the Lord that you are strengthened and encouraged in your relationship with Christ. Visit us on our website, adayofprayer.org, where you can check out our blog, find additional study resources, or shop the official A Day of Prayer store. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So until next time, take care and God bless you.